Do you like eating bread as hard as rock? Do you like being so gay that the government sends you prostitutes? Well, you're in luck, for it may very well be a pirate's life for you. Today we're gonna go over some of the strangest and most interesting pirate facts. Let's hit it. So to kick it off, let's just get a brief introduction to piracy at the time that we're talking about. Today we're mostly going to be covering the golden age of piracy. This is about 1650 to 1730. Now there are much more fascinating and really interesting different sects of piracy throughout history like Greek piracy and the absolutely insane Japanese and Chinese pirates. But today we're going to be focusing on the most popular and most well known form of piracy which was English and Spanish piracy in about 1650 and 1730. Something that's extremely fascinating is actually how all this got started and one of the ways that it was popularized at the time and how it became so big is actually the government use of piracy called buccaneering. These buccaneering ships were pirate ships that would be paid for or funded by government agencies that would be used to attack merchant ships or sailing ships to different countries without technically being used by the country in which it paid for so it wouldn't, you know, make issues. Because you know, if Portugal comes over here with a man of war and attacks some merchant ship from Spain, they're like, dude, Portugal, what are you doing? And Portugal's gonna be like, nah, bruh, it's pirates. And I mean, it's pirates. So this government influence was actually one of the big things that led in the piracy being so big at the time. Along with this was just the social and political environment that people were faced with at the time. Countries and cities were developing at extremely fast rates, places were growing a lot, and a lot of people were just being introduced into the sailing industry because it was absolutely booming at the time as ships were becoming more developed. So I believe almost one in three men in Spain at the time were employed in some sort of sailing industry, whether it be on a man of war, a fishing ship, or just some sort of merchant vessel. So this is an extremely large percent of the population and conditions on these ships can only be described as hellish most of the time. What can be equivalent to slave labor and what was a lot of the time actually slave labor, these people were working in horrible conditions on disgusting ships with very little or no pay and in a lot of the time, they didn't even want to join these ships as bully gangs, which is what they were called, but come in and force people to join up upon man of war crews, and they wouldn't get paid until they got back to shore, commonly not getting paid at all, not a super fun life to live. And piracy offers freedom. It's like, hey dude, I know you're working on that boat over there, and it looks super fun working for 17 months, never getting to see your family, never getting to know what a woman feels like. You know you could be a pirate. Jumping right into it, one of the most interesting things about pirate ships were actually how structured they were, and this is something that is a very common misconception. People view pirates as what they were, you know, criminals and scoundrels, not very structured people, but their ships were extremely structured places. When joining a pirate ship, it wouldn't be uncommon you would actually have to sign up on with the bylaws of that ship saying that you're an official member of this ship you're going to abide by the rules in which it states on the ship sometimes there would be curfews and stated sometimes there would be specific amounts of alcohol you could drink while on the ship and this is this applies to a vast number of things that would be applied with on the ship it talks about how wealth would be distributed if they took something from a different ship, what your role would be on the ship, and these rules varied a whole lot and you can research this more, but it's an extremely fascinating topic within itself. This structureness of pirates actually led to extremely more interesting things, one of them being basically pirate governments. Now this is a topic I can make a whole other video on and it's something that stretches vastly across many different things. But you know how like in the second and third Pirates of the Caribbean movie, there was like the big pirate committee and they banded together to fight the East India Company? That was, that was kind of a real thing. Now maybe not to that degree, but there were actually like committees of pirates that would be used and talked like to talk about these things and uh, do pirate business. You know, we do in pirate, we do in pirate business. We, we pirate government. Those two words do not go together, but they do. Now let's take a step away from some of the semantics to just jump into some of the specific really cool things that went on with pirate ships, one of which was their earrings. There was actually a whole lot that went on with pirates and their earrings, and they were actually really important to them, like on a personal level and for like a physical reason. Of course, there's a lot of superstition about these earrings. A lot of pirates believe that if you wore gold hoops, it would save you from drowning in the ocean. Tested by many pirates, and it is confirmed, 
myth busted. But they actually did have real life physical uses for these earrings. One of the main things being these actually act as burial insurance for these pirates. If a pirate was to die, their, their gold earrings would be melted down and used to pay for a headstone and a casket. Pirates would even engrave or stamp the name of the port in which they wanted their body to be sent to to be buried at. And other pirates would be very obliged to do this. Like I said earlier, they were actually pretty organized people and they kind of had a set of moral standards for one another and if they found some pirate washed up on shore with gold earrings with a port engraved on it, it would feel as if their moral duty to get that pirate to that port. And that's kind of freaking awesome. And the uses for these earrings didn't stop there. They would actually dangle bits of wax off the end of their earrings and when they were about to fire cannons, which were really loud, they would take these bits of wax and shove them into their ears to keep them from going deaf, which is awesome. And this is extremely important if you're working on a ship that was like Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, in which they had 40 cannons. A pirate ship had 40 cannons. But building off of that, let's talk about Blackbeard for a second as he is another one of the most interesting parts of this big golden age of piracy as he's probably the most well-known pirate in history. Blackbeard was a hulking, intimidating figure which could be talked about on his own for hours. Nobody really knows who he was before or how he became a pirate. All people know is that he showed up, he was a boss, and everybody thought he was Satan. That's a real thing, and Blackbeard kind of did that intentionally. What Blackbeard would do is he would weave hemp into his beard and his hair, especially above his ears, and so when he was about to go into battle, he would set the ends of it on fire so it would smoke a whole lot, so smoke would flow out of his hat and out of his beard and he'd look like the devil. Can you imagine you're a poor merchant, you're sitting on your boat, you're just trying to take these weird Indian rocks from India to Spain and then the Caribbean because they told you they sell good at the Caribbean and you're sitting on this boat, you're like, God, I really wish the Spanish didn't send me to the Caribbean. I don't know what's going on here. I don't want to sell these rocks here. And then your boat gets attacked and you're sitting there huddled over in your corner hoping you don't get mutilated by these pirates and you turn around and there's a six foot six man in a black trench coat with smoke pouring out of his hat who is about to literally rip you open and pull your intestines out. It truly was a beautiful period in history. But taking a leap in a whole other direction, let's talk about pirate homosexuality. Pirates had gay marriage. It was called matelage and it was not uncommon for two people or two men on a pirate ship to be joined in matelage in which they would share their treasure, share whatever rewards they got, and even set up trust so if one of these pirates died, the other one would get all the booty. Personally, I like to think that's where the phrase originated from. Two pirates join in Maidlidge, one of them gets a lot of treasure and it's like, hey, you know what you get? Half my booty tonight. But it makes sense, if you're on a ship with 25 dudes for 17 months, Jameson Davison XIII starts to look smoking. This actually started happening to such a degree that the extremely Catholic Spanish and English governments at the time were like, hey, we need to do something about these pirates being gay. Like they knew, they knew they couldn't fix piracy. They knew they couldn't just like stop piracy. They're like, maybe, maybe, maybe we could stop them from being gay. So what did they do? They sent a bunch of prostitutes to Tortuga. In the name of Catholicism, they sent a bunch of prostitutes to a pirate controlled island, which resulted in a lot of pirate threesomes. Because gay pirates gonna gay pirate, and if you can go halvesies on a prostitute, you might as well. I'm done talking about this, next point. Now while that last fact might make it seem like there were absolutely no women on the pirate scene, this is actually not true. It was actually not uncommon at all for women to join upon pirate ships and it wasn't frowned upon in any way. And this makes sense, seeing as the whole idea of piracy was freedom. You're free to be gay if you want to, and if you want to be a woman and steal a bunch of stuff, be a woman and steal a bunch of stuff. We're not gonna stop you. You're a pirate. Let's go into the rapid fire facts round. First fact, now as it's commonly portrayed, pirates stole a lot of treasure and this generally wasn't actually the fact, saying as most ships just aren't sailing around with a bunch of gold on them. So generally pirates treasure would be in the form of lumber or merchant supplies or alcohol. And so they would actually have to resell these or just use them personally as they commonly did. And yeah, so there wasn't a whole lot of buried treasure or gold flying around because there wasn't a whole lot of gold to steal. Next fact. This is more of a fixing a misconception like the last one was, but as it's commonly portrayed, pirates would force people to walk the plank. 
It was much worse than that. Pirates had something called keel hauling. This was something that was also used in naval sailing vessels. But keel hauling is when you tie a rope around somebody's feet, um, throw them off the front of a ship, and then, you know, you know, it's, it's a boat in the water. So a lot of barnacles grew on the bottom, a lot of hard, rock hard, razor sharp barnacles. So when you throw somebody off the front of the boat, while they're drowning to death and being slammed against the bottom of this boat, they're having all their skin ripped off like a fancy rock stone cheese grater and being sliced to pieces. So, um, a little worse than walking the plank. Next, pirate fact. Pirates were kind of the original mixologists. While grog was pretty common at the time, it's what sailing vessels would use to keep water clean. They would just add rum to water to keep it from spoiling or molding or getting bacteria in it. Even though they didn't know what bacteria was at the time, they just knew it was bad. What pirates would do, they were like, hey, this tastes pretty bad. So instead of just rum and water, they would add sugar and lemon juice to it to make it taste good. So they sat around drinking martinis on pirate ships all day, which also kept them from getting scurvy. Pirates were awesome. Next fact. As I said earlier, buccaneers were kind of what started the big pirate movement in this golden age of piracy, and they actually got their name from something called bucking pork. And bucking pork is what a lot of natives on some of these Caribbean islands would do, where they would roast and salt meat over on fire and basically make beef jerky in a, a process called bucking. And it was so popular among the pirates at the time because the pirates' diet mostly consisted of something called hardtack, which is basically bread that's so hard you have to slam it against the table and eat it while it has weevils in it. Weevils are little bugs that just add flavor. Wiggly flavor. But if you didn't like that, you ate buck meat and it became so popular with pirates, they became known as buccaneers. I really hope all you guys enjoyed this video here. It's the first thing I post on YouTube in quite some time, so if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. If you want me to make more stuff, please let me know. If you like the pirate stuff, I'll make more pirate stuff. If you like weird history stuff, I'll do more of that because I love weird history stuff. So just let me know what you want to see more of in the comments. Uh, I am getting my website up super, super soon. Pretty much everything is on there. I'm just finalizing a bunch of stuff. There'll be Iron with Artisans. It'll be up very soon. It'll have all the merch on there as long as all the, uh, along with all the handmade stuff that I make. And yeah, uh, hit my Instagram up. It's right there. And yeah, subscribe if you liked the video. Like it if you liked the video. Uh, I love you all so much. Pirates were awesome, and it kind of sucked to be a pirate, and it was also kind of awesome. So, I love you all. Jesus loves you. Have an amazing day. Bye! Do, do you want to go buck some meat and join in Metal Age later? If not.